Hey guys, we have noticed a lot of people buy or build a new PC and just use it in stock configuration without ever tinkering with it. This is a good and well, but are you leaving a bunch of performance on the table? Yes, there are complicated and somewhat risky ways to squeeze out more performance by overclocking, but there are also a few things you can do to get a quick win without much effort. In this video, we'll be exploring exactly that, specifically on Intel based system. Let's see what we can do. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. For the setups in this video, all the changes were made in BIOS, but don't worry as these are easy and also have limited risk. Our particular setup is the latest 11th gen CPU from Intel. Here we have i5-11600K on ASUS Z590 motherboard. Most of the settings that we've used are available on other motherboard brands as well. They may just have a different name. Before we get into the results, let me cover the four different settings we tested. First is XMP. This technically overclocks your RAM to the speed that is advertised on the box. If you don't enable it, it will likely run at 2400 MHz speed, even if your kit is 3600. Enabling XMP will set it to 3600. Second setting is multi-core enhancement. That's the terminology that ASUS motherboards have. MSI, for example, calls it turbo enhancement and other boards may call it something else. This feature removes limits imposed by Intel and allows CPU to boost past its stock. So normally Intel would boost one or two cores to its maximum boost clock. With this feature enabled, CPU will try to boost all cores to the same level, providing your CPU is running cool and have enough power. This setting does come with a caveat. If your CPU runs really hot or consumes loads of power, it may actually crash without warning. So bear this in mind. Third setting is new one for Intel. It's called Adaptive Boost Technology. For some reason, by default, it is disabled, but in the future, I can see them switching it up and leaving it enabled from the get-go. It's also unclear if this will be available on all CPUs and motherboards or just the high-end ones. This feature in many ways is similar to multi-core enhancement. It pushes all the cores to the maximum possible speed all the way to the maximum boost frequency in 100 MHz increments. The notable difference here is that it is opportunistic. It will work dynamically based on the power and thermal headroom, just like AMD's Precision Boost 2 technology. Because it is dynamic, it will not push your CPU harder than needed, thus eliminating the crashes that multi-core enhancement could cause. The last and often overlooked setting is optimizing your fan curves. It's very difficult for motherboard manufacturers to optimize settings for all kinds of fans. For example, some cheaper fans start making a lot of noise at low speeds, and if motherboard manufacturers set the fan curves too high, then the PC will just sound like a jet taking off. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. If you get nice fans like the ones from Noctua and set them to low speeds, yes, you may have a completely silent system, but also turning them up by about 10 to 20% may still be really quiet. I personally find that stock settings are a little too low for my liking. With all the setting types out of the way, we can check out some of the results we got. Our tests include builds with the stock settings, which on this mode would have multi-core enhancement turned on, then multi-core enhancement turned off, which applies Intel limits, XMP on, Intel Adaptive Boost on, and Intel Adaptive Boost on together with XMP. For a custom profile, we've enabled XMP, multi-core enhancement, Intel Adaptive Boost, as well as tweak the fan curve up. One more thing to note, we've purposely lowered the graphics settings in games, reducing the load on the graphics card to completely eliminate any chance of being bottlenecked by it. This way, any changes in performance are completely due to the BIOS configuration. Okay, it's time to check out the games. First, we have the classic, CSGO, and we immediately see that enabling all the features provides considerable bump in performance in both average FPS as well as 1 percentiles. In Shadow of a Tomb Raider, we see a very similar story. It's starting to become very apparent that simply enabling XMP does the job. The difference from stock is 22% improvement on average FPS and around 20% on 1 percentiles. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we yet again see 10% improvement on average scores and up to 18% improvement on 1 percentiles. In this example, we see the results with adaptive boot technology enabled together with XMP is on top. When looking close at this, it seems that adaptive boost technology may not be supported on the i5 model, as it seems to be limited to the i9. We'll still keep the results for our future tests, but it's important to note. Moving on to productivity tasks. In Blender, with stock configuration, it performs really well, and that's mostly because multi-core enhancement is turned on. In Semitism Benchmark, the difference between all the setups is only noticeable in Compression Benchmark, and it's mostly due to the XMP being enabled. Lastly, we have Cinebench. And in this one, the results are within margin of error, with exception of a setup where multi-core enhancement is disabled. When we delve deep up to analyze the results, we can actually see a slight variance between these setups. From average clock speed, we see that stock and custom is leading. 
What is interesting, they both also do much better temperature wise, running about five to 10 degrees cooler. When it comes to power usage, custom setup, as well as the setup with adaptive boost and XMP enable require about 15 watts more power as compared to the others. With all of this said, it is clear that there are a few things that can improve performance, but also depends on your use case. In gaming, for example, it is essential to enable XMP, otherwise you're simply wasting money that you've already spent. This providing a kit is actually faster than stock. In productivity tasks, it matters, but not as much. When it comes to other tools, these are a bit of a hit and miss. For people who want the easiest and the most efficient system, I'd recommend enabling XMP and also tweaking the fan curves. This will provide CPU the most cooling and improved performance. Do check out what you're currently running as you may have some free performance in the bank. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.